Hey, this is the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip. I really like it. It's, uh, it's fun, but you probably shouldn't buy one. I've been using it for three months and here's everything you need to know. If you had told me last year everything that would happen in 2020, I would be pretty skeptical, especially the part where Samsung made a really amazing clamshell style flip phone with a foldable screen. When the Galaxy Z Flip was first announced, I, I don't know, I didn't know what to expect. On paper, I thought the Motorola Razr phone looked a lot more compelling. Yeah, it, it's more expensive and didn't have all the specs, but the design, there was just something more personal about it perhaps not in the execution. Fast forward today and well, I just can't stop well doing this. I love doing this even three months later. And this, if I'm on a call, and also this to open it, oh, there's nothing like it. And by the way, this phone gets a lot of attention. During the day, the Galaxy Z Flip sits in this position next to my computer. It's kind of like it's a little laptop. Over the past three months, I think probably the biggest surprises was the fact of how much I use this for vertical video and video chats. More on both of these later, but this isn't the perfect phone. It's not the most powerful, doesn't have the best specs, the battery life's okay, the cameras are good, but not the best. And this phone is ridiculously expensive. But I am absolutely addicted to it. And here, let me get into the specifics of what it's been like using the Galaxy Z Flip for the past three months. First, I love and hate this display. When it's clean, it looks amazing and kind of unreal because apps and the internet are, are just right there at the tips of my fingers. Now, this is hard to show on camera, but you just have to experience it. The screen is vibrant, videos look outstanding. Even though it has a 21.9 by nine aspect ratio, it's really wide. Uh, and so if you're watching YouTube videos, most of them are gonna have black bars on either side. However, widescreen movies, oh, absolute treat to watch on this display. But once in a while, the plastic polymer coating starts to get in the way. And this goes from feeling like a cool high-tech phone to more of like a movie prop. And it's really apparent when there's fingerprints on the screen, which happens a lot. Then there's the crease. Ah, the crease. Yeah, it's there. And it bugs me about as much as a display notch does on old phones or current Apple and Google phones, meaning I don't really notice it much anymore. Or here's a better way of putting it. I just don't care. Yeah, there's a crease. In fact, because it has a horizontal crease versus a vertical one, like the Galaxy Fold, you see it a lot less. But oh, do you feel it. Especially in apps where you're scrolling, like Instagram or Twitter or whatever your favorite endless scrolling app is, you're gonna notice this crease. And does it bother me? Not particularly. I mean, I've kind of gotten used to it, and I don't really baby this phone. I tap on it, I push on it, I swipe on it, just as hard as I would a regular phone. But that crease is kind of like this subtle background music that is just a little reminder that this phone has this weird vulnerability. Then there's the outside display, which looks cool and minimalist with its pill shape, but yeah, it's kind of useless. I mean, yeah, it's nice to see the time. It's nice to see how much battery life I have left. And yeah, it's nice to like skip tracks on Spotify, but for reading notifications is pretty much useless because the screen turns off too fast. And yeah, it, it's really kind of cool to see that little selfie camera pop on because you're actually not using the selfie camera, you're using the rear cameras, which are better quality. But the framing you see in that little display is not indicative of what you're gonna get in the final photo. Hey, part of me likes that the little display can't do much and I'm reminded of that fact every time I see the message, open phone for details, because I'm like, yeah, no, duh because the little screen's not gonna tell you these details. But if, let's just say Samsung wants to continue on with this little display, if they just left it on longer, so you can actually read your notifications, 
that would be a step in the right direction. Or they could go the route Motorola did and just make it a little bit bigger and give it a little bit more functionality. So let's get to the name of this phone, the flip aspect. And that's really what defines the phone. So you could flip it from a phone about the size of uh, the Galaxy S20 Ultra, at least the height of it, and fold it down to something that fits into almost any pocket. Now, obviously women's pants pockets, your mileage may vary, but I found it extremely portable and I always grab this phone when I'm going someplace, which these days isn't, <laughs> isn't much, I'll be honest. But let's talk about using the Flip. When I first got it, I was kind of enjoying the fact that I had to be a little more selective about what I was doing. Like, yeah, it's not that hard to flip the phone open, but it definitely just, do I wanna go in and scroll mindlessly on Instagram? I don't know, maybe not. So I was a little more purposeful, maybe that's, that's the word, of things I was doing. However, over time, that purposefulness became tedious, especially when it comes to messaging because I would close the phone and then get a reply and then open the phone and then unlock it and then have to type in the reply and then close the phone and do the whole process over. And that started driving me a little nuts. And that's where I wish that little, that little front screen, well, I just wish I had the ability to reply to messages, even if it was voice to text or just a voice recording, that would be amazing. So because of that, when I wasn't using the phone, as opposed to leaving it in the close position, I often left it and I call it laptop mode, but Samsung calls it flex mode. And that brings me to a discovery or something that I didn't think that I would be using on this phone much, if at all, and that is the video. Because when you have a phone that can stand on its own like this, and I can move the cameras any which way, all of a sudden it's kind of like having a built-in tripod. And I don't know of any other phone right now that can do that. So especially if you're into filming vertical video, this thing is amazing. In fact, sometimes when I'm filming a video on a regular camera, I'll put it into flex mode and, uh, sorry, Samsung, gaff tape it to the top of the other camera, so I'm filming vertical video with this. So with flex mode, Samsung has a couple apps that actually take advantage of the screen at that 90 degree position, but there's not many. And the ones that do, I'd argue they could be better. For example, in the gallery app, uh, when you're in that flex mode position, the photo's on the top half and you can use the bottom to see like the dates and stuff or information you Can swipe back and forth. However, as soon as you go into edit mode, the photo goes right to the middle of the screen. It's so weird, why does it do that? Why does it stay at the top and then you'd have the bottom for all the settings and adjustments you wanna to do to the photo? Like that seems like a big miss. Also, there's not a lot of apps that take advantage of that mode. Now, because the Galaxy Z Flip runs Android 10, you could actually split screen apps. So for example, I would often use the Zoom app on the top half for a Zoom call and then have my emails on the bottom so people are referring to something, we can, I can look at that pretty quickly. But again, there's not a lot of instances where that's gonna work. And I don't know, I just feel like Samsung could really push this flex mode more, both with the camera stuff that I mentioned earlier, but also with the software, because it feels like this is a unique feature you don't see in other phones, at least not yet, until more of these uh, <laughs> foldable phones come out. So flex mode, is it a gimmick? Nah, not really, I think there's some true opportunities there, but I just don't think it's fully fleshed out yet. However, the one thing I really do like about flex mode is this, is on a phone call, being able to hold the phone at an angle, it's so delightful and you can make fun of me all you want. It's almost as fun as ending the phone call by closing the phone. All right, but let's get to the big cloud that hangs over these foldable phones, and that is durability. And when this phone launched, there was a lot of questions about its durability because it was the first foldable phone to use foldable glass. Now, it turns out that glass is ridiculously thin and it's covered in a plastic polymer, but it's glass nonetheless. So, how has this phone handled the past three months? Well, when I look at my screen, I mean, I don't see a single scratch or nick in it. Aside from the crease, that's still there, but yeah, I don't see anything. And when I look on the outside of the phone, there are like, there's like one little tiny scuff. It's barely visible. 
And that's because the phone has this horrible habit of sliding off things and dropping to the ground by itself. In fact, I have never dropped this phone. This phone drops itself. I will leave it on a table or a counter and walk away. And next thing I know it's on the ground. So I don't like that feature of this, but with all those drops, it's still going. With the glass and the polymer, no scratches. So the other concern at launch was the gap when the phone is closed. There's a visible gap, and the idea maybe was that things could get in the gap, that they could scratch the screen or ruin the hinge, kind of like what happened with the Galaxy Fold when it first launched. To my delight, nothing like that has happened. However, it is often, when I open the phone, I. I see it covered in just dust and, and hair. So between wiping the dust and hair off of it from that little air gap and the smudges on it, the screen is constantly being cleaned. So after three months, uh, the screen held up really great. The hinge is fine. The outside is pretty good. The slip thing's annoying. But the most important thing is I'm able to use this expensive foldable phone like a phone. I'm not babying it. I'm throwing it in my pockets. I'm putting it in my bag. I'm leaving it out. Uh, it, it's exposed to dust and hair and all the other stuff that your phones are regularly dealing with. And yet it still works just like a phone. Hey, in terms of performance, this is essentially a Galaxy S10 or maybe more accurately a Galaxy S10e because it has the fingerprint reader on the side. And I know some people wanted this to be a specs like crazy machine, and it's just not that. But if you're willing to pay $1380 for this, you could get that specs machine for $20 more in the form of the Galaxy S20 Ultra. Now, in day-to-day -day use, it was fine. Apps opened fine, animations never stuttered, um, gaming was fine, editing photos fine. Yeah, I can't I can't slight anything that is tied to performance. It does make me wonder how, how long the software on this will be supported by Samsung. Because I think if you're paying $1,380 for a phone, that is as important as the flex and folding of that screen. But that's just me. Uh, the other thing is the battery. The battery's okay. Um, sometimes I got a, a full day charge out of it, but often I'm finding myself recharging this phone around late afternoon or dinner time. So there's that. I guess, you know, there's a compromise if you want to have a small, thin folding thing to fit in your pocket. It probably has to have thin batteries too. In terms of cameras, it's essentially the same camera system on this phone that's found on the Galaxy S10. And they're good. It's a good camera system. It's not the best one you're going to get. Uh, it's a solid B, maybe compared to the A plus of a Pixel 4 or iPhone 11 Pro. But I, well, I've not been disappointed by the photos I've taken or the videos I've captured. In fact, I love that it has the ultra wide angle camera on here. I love using that feature. And it even has night mode on a foldable phone. That's pretty cool. So to wrap up, after three months, is the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip worth $1,380? Yes, I think it really is. And that's because it's a phone that can do this. Should you pay $1,380 for this phone? For most people, I would say no. But for those of you out there who wanna flirt with the wild west of mobile phone technology and design, yeah, you're gonna have a lot of fun with this. If you wanna learn more about my three months with the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip, check out my article on CNET.com. But I wanna hear from you. Do you have a Z Flip or do you like it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Throw your thoughts in the comments.